Hi everyone and thanks for being with me. I'm going to talk a little bit today about Jeffrey Epstein. Now, as you're all probably aware, the last uh, last week, uh, a lot of information was dumped in relation to uh, the documents that have been accumulated with regard to Epstein because of all the court cases that he had experienced and uh, particularly in relation to Maxwell. So in these documents, people were anticipating that names would be released that would surprise us all and that would give us a lot to talk about in terms of who had been involved with Max, with um, not only Maxwell, but obviously Epstein over the years. Now, one of the things that we need to be aware of, I think, and my primary criticism is that if there are all these people that have been involved in this um, and had known about the, the behaviours and the pedophilic behaviours of uh, Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, well, why hasn't anybody been prosecuted apart from those two individuals? And it's a complicated case because initially, I think, um, I can't remember the year, but uh, he was locked up and then because of a technicality, he was Epstein was released. And then there's a lot of questions around who influenced the prosecutor that caused that that release. So, and and then of course there was his uh, suspected suicide, which uh, a lot of people are speculating was not just suicide. So there's lots of issues surrounding this man. It's kind of like a mystery man that we don't understand a lot of what has been happening in his world and people I think are trying to sort through that and understand it. Now Douglas Murray was standing in for Piers Morgan and uh, I've got an interview which he did with three individuals which I'll play for you in just a moment. It has been cut down a little bit because it ran for 21 minutes. I've cut it down to about seven but uh, I have got the salient points so I'll play that for you in a second. But there's a couple of things I need to say about Douglas Murray, and that is that he did a great job. It was a really good interview, and uh, something I think that if uh, Douglas knew I was proud of him, he'd be proud of that, because uh, he's usually crap. And in this particular instance, he was the interviewer, and that no one was attacking him, no one was suggesting that his beliefs were crazy or inappropriate, it wasn't about Gaza or Israel, or and he wasn't need, he didn't need to put on this front that he tends to put on. So as an interviewer, I think he did a fabulous job. So all those people that you know comment on my uh, sec my comment section below, uh, who normally would be criticising me for my criticism of him, on this occasion I am not critical at all. In fact. I celebrate the fact that I think he's a great interviewer when he's not talking about the shit that he believes, that he specifically believes in, and when no one's challenging him about those views. So he did a great job. So as we go through this uh, interview, um, I'll play, uh, I'll, I'll comment perhaps a little bit throughout it, but there are some interesting points that are raised. And one of them primarily is, you know, how come he was able to influence so many people over such a long period of time? How did he use that influence? Was it manifested in um, bribery? Uh, was it manifested in gaining influence over some of these people? Why did these people in particular see him as somebody that they should associate with? What particular talents did this man have that brought these people into his orbit? So that there's lots of, it's really, he's an interesting character, uh, most terrible, disgusting human being. I don't think anyone's going to dispute that. Um, but people were captured in this realm that he created. And they themselves were wondering about, you know, how is this going to pan out? And I guess some of them might be wondering if they have participated in some of the sexual activities which were part of Epstein's uh, environment, then, you know, how is this going to catch them out as well? So there'd be a lot of people, I think, at the moment panicking about where this may eventually lead. However, 
None of the documents that have been delivered at the moment spell out anything specifically about these people. There's been a lot of redactions based on conversations had with Ghislaine Maxwell in relation to the young women, young girls in fact at the time, who were trapped by this Epstein web of pedophilia. And so those names have been redacted. So, but a lot of names have still come out. It doesn't necessarily mean that they were involved in the behaviours that got him incarcerated. What it does mean is though, they were involved in his circle of friendships and uh, he was very good apparently at building relationships with the rich and powerful. And as a result of that, who knows how he used those resources in terms of uh, the sexual behaviours in relation to young girls. So I'll, I'll play the video for you and uh, we'll talk about it along the way. It's a really good interview and uh, 10 out of 10 to my mate Douglas for doing it. And the more that comes out about Epstein, including still very mysterious circumstances surrounding his death in custody, means that I'm willing to at least consider alternative narratives other than the one being fed to us through official channels. Now, joining me now is the author and investigative journalist, Vicky Ward, the author of War Against the Jews, and Jeffrey Epstein's former lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, and the man I mentioned in my monologue, physicist and podcaster, Eric Weinstein. Well, you know, what happened there was Jeffrey Epstein um, you know, he was an extraordinary manipulator, not just of uh, young, vulnerable women, but of rich, powerful men. And, you know, uh, what happened in my reporting was that, uh, you know, I still don't know all of the details, but I had uh, the on the record allegations of uh, two sisters, two women, um, and you know, those those allegations were cut from uh, my story. And, you know, Jeffrey Epstein had gone to great lengths to meet with then editor, editor of uh, Vanity Fair. Um, and at the same time, you know, Jeffrey, Ep Jeffrey Epstein was a formidable person uh, to write about. You know, he, he threatened me. I was pregnant with my children. And he told me that he, if he didn't like what I wrote, he would... Uh, have a witch doctor place a curse on my unborn children. He told me he'd found out where I was giving birth. Uh, you know, I, 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 I add, this didn't stop me from reporting the absolute uh, best that I could. And I did debunk some of the claims he made about his own financial professional life. Um, but, I, you know, the whole thing was, Douglas, a nightmare. Unfortunately, the documents still don't show a different part of Jeffrey Epstein's life, which is the manipulation of the powerful people. It was it was a horrific portrait of uh, this horrific sexual subculture in his homes, but it didn't explain why. There are two points I want to make here. The first is Vanity Fair and this woman have been following Epstein for years, and even though they've come forward with a number of people who were abused by him. There haven't been uh, many cases brought against him. There was the, uh, a couple and there was also the one against Prince Andrews. But given the number of people that were abused by him, it is surprising that there have been so few accusing him, even though I do understand the reason for that. And that is that, you know, women coming forward now and talking about this, it kind of smooches their name they have to relive it all again re be re-traumatized by it and that's very uncomfortable for women I, I understand all that and what benefit can there be for them given that he's dead um, so I as, as even though I understand all that Vanity Fair did not follow through with some of the there is some criticism by some commentators that Vanity Fair knew more than what they did and that they didn't uh, investigate that further or take those issues to the police. So even though she's looking pretty good, I do suspect that there were some underlying aspects of this which we do not know about in terms of the influence over Vanity Fair, who did write a number of articles in relation to him. Like Bill Clinton um, and 
massive philanthropists like Leslie Wexner, why they wanted to be around this man. So I was one of those who wanted these. And that's, I just did say, that's one of the, one of the questions for me too is why, she asked a great question, which I think they need to, that people need to investigate more and ask some of these people, the Bill Gates, the Clintons of this world, the Donald Trumps, they need to ask them why it is that they uh, were so encaptured by this particular individual. Um, what I guess you can't ask them what did he hold over them because that would be admitting that he has some secrets about them, I guess. But certainly uh, a lot of them who weren't involved in his nefarious activities certainly could talk about what they saw in him. I mean, D Donald Trump mentioned that he was a great deal of fun and he liked younger women like he did. Um, so that's Donald Trump's reason. But what are, what's all the other reasons? What's what's Bill Gates' reason, for example? Release. My disappointment is that only some have been released. I want everything to be released because they will confirm the fact that I did nothing wrong. And they would also shed light on other people who have been uh, accused, some truthfully, some, uh, falsely, some falsely. But um, the key point is that uh, we can't have just partial uh, releases of material. In many of these cases, the accusation is there, but the rebuttal is not there or the disproof is not there. So for the public to form a valid judgment, uh, you need a full release. I don't need that because in my case, the woman who accused me has admitted that she may have mistaken me for someone else, but I think others may very well need the full evidence to be exculpated to prove but some don't want it he was a very strange person from beginning to end i don't really believe just just on jesuits the the issue is that he had some hundred odd flights or a hundred odd contacts according to this documentation with uh, epstein now we do need to remember that for a time being he was epstein's lawyer uh, he was certainly Epstein's lawyer when the cases were, uh, when his cases were taken to court, even though he will argue that he had nothing to do with Epstein once the allegations were made known. So his social contacts ceased at that particular time. But what we also need to be aware of also, I think, is that um, he offered his... So this is one of the ways by which he captured people in this web was he offered his private jets to people to... Well, Clinton, for example, took a jet from the US to some place in Asia to go to a conference. And Epstein offered him his jet. Who was on board that jet? We do not know. Um, and what were the dealings that revolved around all of that and why Clinton would even take that jet in the first place is a question that needs to be answered. But. Uh, we can't assume for a moment that just because a person had X number of contacts with Epstein that they were involved in his nefarious activities either. When you say that, that he was a strange person, I mean, describe some of the things that were odd in that first meeting, that, meet, that one meeting um, you had. Sure. Uh, I don't hear anyone mention the fact that he used an American flag as a tablecloth, making his dinner table look like both a coffin and a trap for you to stain the flag of your own country. Uh, he brought in a woman who um, I think he introduced as an heiress uh, who was brawless that he bounced on his uh, leg at a financial meeting uh, in an attempt to create a distraction. Uh, the whole thing was completely surreal from beginning to end. I think one thing that you can learn about this is that he created an incredibly uh, intriguing world. There was no hint. I think this was like 20, 2003, 2004, so this before he gets into trouble in Florida. Um, and, you know, the whole thing was like a scene out of a movie, and you both wanted to be nowhere close and to know everything about it. And I walked out of there, called my wife, and said, uh, I just met a human being who does not appear to be a normal human being. He appears to be a construct. Did not appear to have a prime broker. Nobody seemed to have traded with him. Nobody. Uh, seems to ask questions. I actually do find this part of the conversation really interesting is that um, he's made all this money but the question still remains and someone in the comment section would like to answer this for me it would be helpful is to actually where did this money come from because there's no evidence to say that he was actually involved in uh, the stock market in the way that people have declared 
around him. So it's very suspicious that we don't, for example, ask for Form 13F. If he was a major hedge fund trader, uh, it's almost impossible to move through the markets without leaving a wake. Why, this is the Alan first Dershow, can I just ask why you're so been... certain about this? Because it, it does seem to be an intelligence gathering operation of some kind, or a compromat situation, or a blackmail situation, something like that, surely. It's possible, but I never saw any evidence of that. He was a guy from Brooklyn, grew up in Coney Island. He was very curious. He wasn't as smart as he thought he was. He didn't know as much about science as he thought he did. But Let me just come back to Vicky Ward quickly. Uh, you've been waiting patiently, but um, I mean, a man who apparently boasted to associates that he had compromising material, film footage and others of important individuals. And that's not the normal way in which anyone behaves, is it? Right, Douglas. So, I mean, one thing we did learn in the papers that came out last night is that, you know, he did, in some of the depositions, ask the women who claimed that they were sent out to men to give them very detailed descriptions of what had happened so that he could use it to blackmail them. Um, I've never seen that spelled out quite so specifically before. And then to your point about, you know, the question, who was... So the question then becomes, who are the people that the young women were sent out to gather information on? And the information that they gathered, where is that? So I think these are important questions that actually need to be answered. Here's what we do know that is not speculative. He did know the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. He did know Mohammed bin Zayed, the ruler of the... Uh, United Arab Emirates. Uh, he did know very well Ehud Barak, the former Prime Minister uh, of Israel, that the pictures of all of these men, he, there's a picture of him, uh, I think, I believe with the Pope. There was a picture, uh, a, a picture of him of all sorts of world right. leaders. And, and we know that even after he got out of jail in 2010, you know, um, he he was clever enough to use the connections he had with the academics, with the, the former president of Harvard, with these other world leaders to draw in other billionaires like Bill Gates. He understood how very rich, powerful people around the world connect with each other. He understood what very rich, powerful people want from each other. He understood how to connect the plutocracy and the elite. Does that mean he was an asset? I don't, you know, there is, there is speculation, but it, it is, he, he certainly was a manipulator of the 0.001%. And the more that comes... And so I think it's important to understand that there's still so much to be discovered <coughs> about Epstein. And I wonder, <coughs> the, <coughs> I mean, the more we find out, does it mean then <coughs> that there were more people involved in this? And they were discussing there whether he had information uh, that was helpful to the CIA or any other um, security service. So the questions still remain, to what extent did he have influence? How did he wield that influence? Who got caught in this web that he had? And I'd be interested to know, how did all of this start? So I want to know where his first dollar came from. Uh, you know, because it's not just about an evil man. It's actually about how people were swept up in part of his evilness, but also why they were swept up with him, regardless of all of that, what he offered what he provided for them that was a benefit to them. I think that's a really important question that we need to find a way to answer. So remember to uh, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell for further notifications, and I'll be really interested in your comments below as to what you think about Epstein and where do you think all of this eventually is going to go. Thanks everybody for being with me. Take care, look after yourselves, and more importantly, be safe. Thank you.